Hey guys, Azanice here, and welcome to Roblox Souls RNG. So yeah, this is going to be a different video, but basically, it's an idle game on Roblox, but it's gotten really popular recently with recent updates, and it's reached up, up to about 100,000 active players. I've been playing this almost since the start for a pretty long time, so I'm pretty knowledgeable, and it is some sort of idle game, and I was going to do more idle games on this channel, so I'm going to explain to you what it's about, all the mechanics, and what the best strategy is to get all the auras. So I've actually played this quite a bit and I'm actually on the 76th most rolled leaderboard. What is this game? It uses a lottery based system that when you roll you get auras and then you can equip them and then I'm in a public lobby here and you can see everyone's got different auras and you can see the rarity. And one of my rarest is this one, Hades, which is a 1 in 6.6 million. But I have done 1.9 million rolls so um, it's not too unlikely and there's different buffs and things we can talk about. So I think the aim of this game is to try and complete your whole collection. This has got all the um, all the auras that exist here, but of course I've, I haven't got all of them, or some of them are locked because some of them are really rare. The most, the rarest is one in 250 million. Usually the thing is, the rarer the aura, the cooler the the thing looks. Look at this guy; he's got rubies. He's got it's a one in 350, and it doesn't look that good. But the other ones look a lot better. And we're about to get something rare here. This is the animation when you get something um, above 1,000. Yeah, that was above 10,000 because there's a star in the middle. There is also a Discord server which has about 90,000 people in it. This game is quite community driven. People can post their links to their private servers. Um, people will update the wiki and also all the new auras now are submitted by the community. There's a chance for your aura to be in the next update in the game. So that's probably the, the appeal of it and there's just so many people you can talk to anyway. So now I'm going to explain to you all the mechanics and then we'll move on to the most optimal strategy. So I've just hopped onto an alternate account just to show you what it's like when you first log in. You press roll, it's going to go through this animation, similar to like opening a CSGO case, and then whenever you land on is what you're going to get. Common. So this is the first one we got. This is a 1 and 2, so 50-50 chance to get this one. And then you can, you can equip it, and then it's got a little effect. We can roll again. We got natural. Let's equip that one. And then this is a different effect. We, we, we're green. And that's basically the premise. Each aura is going to have their own little design. Some have songs to them. When you equip auras, they go in your storage. By default, you only have six slots of storage, but you can expand it with money, and I'll tell you how to get that in a second. And your collection just shows you all the auras that you've gotten over your, the course of your experience. Um, even if you've removed them from your or from your storage. This is all the ones I've got on this account. The next one is the inventory. This is where your items are stored when you collect them um, and then you can use them or equip them if it's something that you equip. The next lots achievements which gives you coin rewards for doing certain tasks. For example this one rolling a hundred times you get 50 coins and I've already claimed that. The next section is for quests which I'll get onto later and the next section is for the settings. So you can toggle all of the all of the music but what I'm going to go into is the skip warning, swap warning, and auto equip. Okay, so explain these settings. First of all, they're a little bit buggy. You're going to have to click all of them first for them to, so that they all show up as a, a thousand, then press apply, then go into them, then you can change them. There's a little bit buggy. The devs need to fix that. Basically, skip warning is the minimum rarity an aura has to be for it to give you a warning when you try to skip it. For example, if we put the skip warning on one, anything rarer than the one in one, which is everything, when we roll something, is going to say, are you sure? If you roll something really rare, you don't want to skip it, this is there for you. Next one is the swap warning. This is the same sort of thing, but this applies to swapping. If I roll a natural and press equip, it's gonna say, this is gonna replace my current aura. And because my current aura is rarer than one in one, it's gonna give us a warning for, for doing that. And then auto equip is the minimum it needs to do for it to just equip it automatically. So if I press roll and get anything, now it won't do that. Oh, that's because my storage is full. So let's remove something from my storage. There we go. It's gonna automatically equip whatever we have. Cool, oh, we got one in 64, pretty awesome. But now it's gonna say that because we got storage as well. So when the storage is full, it will automatically give you a warning. Now, if we have everything disabled and then we use auto roll, Auto roll is literally just going to, oh. 
Auto roll pretty much acts as an auto clicker for roll and auto and and skip. So it's going to skip everything. So if you have auto roll on, make sure you have an auto equip on something like um, I'll put it on four. So now there we go. One and five. That's rarer than four. It's going to be, and it also includes four. So it's not just four. It's four and above. So that there we go. So it, if I delete some stuff. It will only equip stuff more than four. So basically, it won't equip any commons, basically. Moving on to the Aura filter. Um, this will bypass any of the previous settings you just did. And if you really don't want an Aura, you can put on Auto Skip. It will always skip it. Put on Auto Equip. It will always equip it. So disabled, it will use the previous settings. If it's not disabled, this takes priority. But it only works for Auras that you've already got. Some special auras require certain conditions in order to be rolled. For example, wind is a 1 in 300 only when the weather condition is windy. Same thing for galaxy. Galaxy is a 1 in 500,000 but only during a star form. There is an exception to this rule called breakthrough. Breakthrough allows you to get any weather specific aura at any time but at a much higher chance. The default rarity is 10 times as rare but some things can be even more rare. For example, galaxy has a 15 time chance. If you go to the collection, some auras have skins. For example, Diaboli has a locked skin of a different variant. Skins are just rarer versions of the aura with a different design. But for all intents and purposes, you can just treat it as if it was a new aura. But the rarity is usually a multiplier of the base skin. Special auras can only be obtained from quests. For example, all of these four are from, from Lime's quest during the Valentine's Day event. Also, some auras are unobtainable, so if you are doing it now, you won't be able to get one of them, sorry. So lightning used to be obtainable, used to be a 1 in 40,000 or something, but then they removed it because that was a bug. But I got it before that was a thing. Rolling anything greater than 1,000 will give you a black screen, and based on the animation and the colour, you can determine what aura you're getting. It will also play an audio cue, just so you know when you've got it, and it go comes under the server SFX tab. You can check out the wiki to see all different auras and their breakthrough rarities. Moving on to weather, biomes or weather, I'm just going to read the wiki. The default biome is normal and then different weather conditions have a chance to spawn. For example, windy has a 1 in 500 and lasts for 2 minutes, snowy is a 1 in 750, also 2 minutes, rainy also 2 minutes. Starfall was rarer but lasts 10 minutes, null is even rarer, lasts 99 seconds and then glitch biome is the rarest of all and it only happens every biome change, not just every second. So these are the chances every second. So 1 in 500 every second for that specific word to, to spawn. And then once that word is spawned, it will last for as long as it does. It will go back to normal, and then the chances of a word spawning will start again. For example, while Windy's happening, none of the other rarer biomes can spawn until Windy's done. And as I said, you can have certain auras only during these weather conditions. Moving on to items. Consumables can spawn in any of these um, eight slots on the map and this is where you can get luck potions, speed potions, coins and gilded coins. As you can see there's one up there, we're going to go to it. So the green glowing potions are luck potions and they're going to give you plus 100% luck for 60 seconds. It's unknown to how increasing luck actually affects the probability pools but essentially it will give you higher chances to get rarer rarer auras over 1000 and then lower chances to get anything below 1000 for example if you have 200 percent luck you cannot roll a common here we go luck potion coin speed potion so yeah lucky potion have a one in five chance of one every 20 seconds speed potions have a one in ten chance of one every 20 seconds and they'll make you roll 25 percent faster for 30 seconds Coins spawn more frequently than potions and they give you $50 in your money bank which only use is to upgrade your storage and a gilded coin 
gives you $100, they are a lot rarer. Other consumables can be crafted in the cauldron in Stella's cave. Craft these by equipping the aura and adding it to the crafting menu. For example, I've got 1,900 lucky potions, so if I wanted to craft fortune potion free, I can add my lucky potions. I need some uncommons and some rares. So let's look at my storage and let's allow us to get some uncommons. I'll put them on auto equip mode. And then we've equipped it. And there we go. I've added it to the pool. And then once you've fulfilled all the requirements, we can craft them. So here are the different potions you can get at Stella's Cave. So the fortune potion is going to give you extra luck. Fortune potion free giving you plus 250% luck for 600 seconds. Serve the crafting recipe. You need the previous tier of potion to make it and you cannot use different tiers of the same potion, it will not let you. But you can use a fortune potion with a regular luck potion, that will work. Using two of the exact same potion will add the potion's length onto the previous one. So if you use the fortune potion, wait five seconds, use another fortune potion, then you would have it for the duration of 1,195 seconds. The haste potions act as a buff speed potion, minus 50% roll, roll cooldown time for five minutes, and the heavenly potions which were changed, plus a million percent luck and plus two million percent luck, which is 10,000 times luck and 20,000 times luck, but only for one roll. And they're really expensive for acquiring 100 lucky potions and 125 lucky potions. So many. So that's 325 luck potions and an exotic, which is one in 100k, just for this one thing. Universe potion, put it simply, will pretty much give you a star fall for 10 minutes, even if there's no star fall biome. All auras obtained during a starfall have their normal chances. The way you access Stella's cave is by doing this obstacle course here. So we have to climb this ladder and then we've got to jump on these trees. I'm going to go in first person because I find that a bit easier. But it's up to you. Then we're going to have to go on the edge of this cliff. Then up this ladder, which is a bit buggy. Then one more jump and then you have to jump inside the waterfall here. And that gives you access to the cave and then you'll get teleported. To this part of the cave. This was a trap because this bridge will fall down. So actually what you need to do is you need to do these parkour jumps or obstacle course jumps. There we go. And now you have access to Seller's Cave. If you escape and reset character, you can go back to the beginning. You can also craft items that you can equip at Jake's workshop. If you press F and press open, it will give you a crafting menu. For example, gear basting, the base item to craft anything. For example, the solar device, which holding this will increase my luck by 50%. And I have to add one gear basting, which we'll make at the start. One solar, one divinus, and one rare aura. There's also another obstacle course. If we go over here next to this huge tree here. And we take this part because it's easier. This will give us access to this green diamond thing. And once we pick it up, we get teleported to spawn and we get plus 30% luck for 60 seconds. I'll now talk about quests. So some NPCs will give you quests for example, here's some footage of the Valentine's update. Free rubies? Nope. Okay, okay, good, I've already... Okay, we just managed to do the quest. Great job. Let me cook, all right? <laughs> there we go, Divinus Love, let's go. And once you've visited the quest, it will appear in the quest area. And then once you complete the quest, you go back to the NPC and they give you a reward. Stella has a quest, find her star, which has a chance to spawn in any of the potion spots spots during a star fall. And finally, you may notice that I have quick roll, and what quick roll does is it skips the animation of the roll, making you roll about five times faster, which is pretty essential. Fortunately, this is a pay to win game, and you do have to pay 100 Robux to get it, which I think it's about $1, but I don't really play Roblox. The other thing that you can purchase is VIP, and VIP will make you walk faster, which will help you do the obstacle course. It will also give you 1.2 time quest rewards, and give you the VIP name tag. So the first thing you want to do is you want to create a private server. To do this, you scroll down to the servers tab, 
and then there should be an option for you to create your own private server for free. The reason we do this is because rolling is based on ping. You get the best ping when you're in the private server and also you'll be able to pick up all the potions yourself that spawn without anyone else getting them. Then what you want to do is you want to buy a quick roll that's going to make you roll about five times faster. It's going to save so much time. So unfortunately it is pay to win. I wouldn't recommend paying for the VIP because that just makes you move faster and the crash reward isn't that good. What you want to do with this strategy is you want to get to the Exogorn as quick as possible um, as this is currently the best item you can equip giving you 100% luck and minus 25% roll cooldown. That being said, if you roll any of these auras, make sure you put them straight into the crafting using Jake's Workshop and don't trash any of them. The progression toward this item will start off by getting the luck glove, which first you need the gear based thing, which shouldn't take too long because it's very common auras. Then you get the luck glove, rarest thing there being crystallized, and then once you equip it, you get plus 25% luck. Then you wanna go for the solar and lunar device. Um, if you have both, I would equip the solar device. I think that's a little bit better. These ones are a lot harder to get. Solar, which is a one in 5,000 only during the day, and lunar, which is a one in 5,000 only during the night. Additional solar and lunar, so you can craft eclipse, then once you craft the Eclipse, you want to combine the two devices to make the Eclipse device, which has the effect of both. And then after that, you'll probably have all of these auras along the way. Undead is one in 10,000, and the Exotic is the hard one, which is one in 100,000. And then once you've got all of those, you can go for the Exo Gauntlet. Also, while you're waiting on getting some of the auras for the Exo Gauntlet, like the Exotic and stuff, make sure you're dumping these auras into the Jackpot Gauntlet. It is quite a grind, but at the start, you're not going to have much coins, and... Um, the jackpot gauntlet allows you to get 777 coins whenever you roll a jackpot. Based on testing with the extra gauntlet, you around 10 jackpots per hour. It'll be a bit less with the jackpot gauntlet, probably about 6, 7 or 8. That's still giving you about 5,000 coins per hour, which you can dump all, expanding your crafting because coins don't have any other use right now. Having a bigger storage will save some hassle when crafting advanced potions. Seller's Cave, which I'm going to talk about next. When you do get the Jackpot Gauntlet, I would equip it for a two to three active days. You'll get a little bit less luck, but you want to grind enough coins just to make the storage as big as you want it. And then as soon as you're happy with how big the storage is, you can move on to maining the Exo Gauntlet. And whenever you're crafting, make sure you're using the Aura Filter. It's very useful. For example, we need 777 rares. Go in the settings, go to the Aura, put Rare on Auto Equip Mode put everything else that you don't want in auto skip mode to ensure that you only equip the auras that you need for the crafting recipe. While you're crafting them, you also want to pick up potions along the map. The path you want to take, which goes through all the potion slots apart from the new one. Starting from spawn, you want to look over to this tree and that's the first potion spot. Then you want to look into in the house. And then you want to look against this tree, then this corner here. We can see this lucky potion. This spot here, and then once you've done that, we're going to go across the bridge, go over here. That's the, that's another spot. Run up here, and then over there, and then we can just walk backwards or save a little bit of time. You could fall in this lava. It might save a little bit of time, but it's negligible. If you're actively playing, just have a look at those spots. Once you collect the potions, you want to save them because we want to craft the even more powerful potions in Stella's cave. Once you're lucky enough to find Stella's star during a star fall, then she'll give you access to this portal where you don't have to do the parkour and you get straight to it. All the potions here are actually pretty useful, but what we're going to focus on is trying to get Fortune Potion 3 and Haste Potion 2. For the Haste Potions, you're going to need Wind and Speed Potions, so make sure you're using the Aura Filter to get Wind. For the Fortune Potion, you're going to need Gilded. Unfortunately, these take a large, large amount of Lucky and Speed Potions to get to the best one, but later on in this video, I'm going to talk about the best way to grind potions. For the Universe Potion, you're going to need some Comets, so make sure you're not trashing those. And Heavenly Potions are the hardest to get, as you need Celestial, which is a 1 in 350,000 chance. Don't worry about the Heavenly Potions for now. In the early stages, getting some of the auras that are not too hard to get, we're going to combine Fortune Potion, Haste Potion, Lucky Potion, and Speed Potion. And since the Fortune Potion lasts 10 minutes, we're going to use different amounts of these potions to make them all last 10 minutes. We're going to use 10 Lucky, 20 Speed, 2 Haste, and 1 Fortune. And when using them all at once, we roll at about this speed. But when I was first recording this video, there was a bug that completely got rid of the roll time, which made it roll this fast. Also, make sure you have an auto clicker that's spamming roll rather than having auto roll because that is actually faster. 
A bit unintuitive, but that's the strat. Now, if you haven't obtained all the auras that you need during a starfall, you want to also use this in combination with one universe potion, and that will simulate being in the starfall biome. When doing this, you will most certainly get two comets back, which will pay for the universe potion. So you're going to pretty much have infinite universe potions. It's also a good idea to, to have Gilded and Wind as also equipped in the filters, as you're going to be rolling very fast with lots of luck. But make sure you're in Seller's Cave so your inventory doesn't fill up too fast, so you can use it in the crafting recipes. If you find the inventory is getting too full, just turn off everything. Just put everything on auto skip. And basically, that is the OP combination strategy. Use it with the universe potion if you don't have Comet, Galaxy, and Star Scourge. Use them during Snowy if you haven't got Glacier and Permafrost. Use it during Rainy if you don't have Stormwall, Sailor, or Abyssal Hunter. During a Null to get Undefined, and you'll most certainly get it because Undefined's only a 1 in 1000. Also, if you haven't got Twilight, use the potions when it's night time. And save these potions just in case you get the Glitched, which is extremely rare by them. I haven't even got it yet, but... I would make sure I would, I would make sure to save a few of those potions just in case you get glitched. But for the rarer auras, like glitched or anything above like in the millions, this is where the heavenly potions come in. So as you're playing, you'll eventually be able to build up all the celestials that you need and the exotics and gilded to get heavenly potions. Craft heavenly potion too, and since you get one roll, we need to get the maximum luck possible. So you may have noticed after every 10 rolls, you get a two times luck roll. First you want to set up for that. Then you want to get prepared on the island because you're going to get this basic blessing. Then ensure you have the Exo Gauntlet equipped. Use the four potions that I talked about before. Add the Universe Potion if you want to get try and get Star Scourge. Get the basic blessing. Use your Heavenly Potion too, and then just roll. I'd also recommend saving a Heavenly Potion too just for glitched. And that is the basic strategy to get all the auras. Unfortunately, some auras you are not able to get anymore. For example, lightning, as I talked about before, it's now become unobtainable due to a bug. The blossom aura and the van time skins are no longer possible. Sorry about that. And the soul aura, you will be able to get this in your collection, but you won't be able to equip it. The way the soul aura works is if you see an admin, a mod, or a developer with the soul aura, if you see him, if one of them joins your world with the aura equipped, it will automatically go into your collection. Now let's move on to the idle strategy on what to do when you're not actively playing the game. I'm gonna make a macro that goes through all the potion slots and spams F to pick them all up and keeps doing that in a loop. So while you're going to sleep or while you're away from the computer, it's gonna grind, you're gonna pick up all the potions and get you lots of coins as well to expand your inventory. So on the wiki, there is a macro guide. I don't use this. I personally use Razor Synapse. We want to get camera angle as a top-down view um, because sometimes you're going to miss a potion spot if you don't do that. Adjust the camera so you're walking a roughly straight line. That's close enough. And then I'm going to walk off the edge. Now, one more thing. If you're like me and you don't always want to be active, um, but you still want it to grind rolls by using the computer, playing a different game or something, we're going to use BlueStacks to do that. So once you've installed BlueStacks, you can download Roblox. Sometimes it likes to ask you to get BlueStacks X, but there is a way to get it about BlueStacks X. You just need to go to the actual app store and then find it because it likes to be a bit weird. So once you've installed Roblox, you also want to go um, to Play Store and you want to search Auto Clicker and you want to do this one with this icon. Um, this is the one that I use. You probably use any other one. And then Single Target Mode. I have that on 100 seconds just when I get kicked but I'm gonna put it on 30 seconds so I don't miss some potions. We're gonna do a little bit of some strategy. We're gonna press able, enable, we're gonna go on Roblox. Then what you wanna do is you wanna set up um, some game controls um, by going to the controls editor. And what I did is I set E on a tap spot. Um, and then that is just so I can um, enable and disable the macro with a key by instead of having to click over there. And then all we're gonna do is we're going to go to one of the potion spots I'm gonna choose here, stand next to it, Put the tap spot on where the potion is and we want to turn on auto roll because I found that when you're using an auto clicker on roll using blue stacks the game likes to bug out a bit and it likes to stop you from rolling. Press E to activate the tap spot. It should pick up the coin but it is set on 30 seconds so we're going to have to wait. Set it to like a relatively high second value just so it doesn't lag out your computer and then you can alt tab and then you can do whatever you want on the computer and that is the strategy that I use. Um, that was a long video. Um, I hope to get some new aura soon. Um, that uh, is a really exciting strategy with all those all those potions and rolling instantly. I find that very enjoyable. I wonder if you would find it enjoyable too. 
if you made it to the end of this video, thank you very much for watching. Leave a comment, see what you thought, and uh, I'll see you in the next video.